Gentlemen, we've just enjoyed that great main event from here in Singapore. Paul, I want to get your thoughts first. Did it live up to all of your expectations and more? Yeah, I think more. I, I, I honestly do because I've, it was a war. I mean, both these guys stood. They traded. They were in the pocket going back and forth. There was dirty boxing. Ben Askren's out there throwing kicks. He's getting his <laughs> takedowns. Maya's reversing things. They're going back and forth in the grappling. We saw the grappling exchanges that everybody was anticipating for this fight. And then we saw a finish, which we didn't know which way it was going to go. But Maya's jiu-jitsu was ended up being stronger than Ben's. Got that submission. Beautiful work from Maya. I mean, I, I it was a fantastic fight. A little bit of everything, which is what you want from a mixed martial arts fight. We got to see some some nice striking from Damian Meyer. Slight advantage to him, I would say, over Askren. Askren constantly pushing forward, chasing for the takedown. Great anti-clinch from Damian Meyer. But as you would expect, when it hits the floor, the reversals and that rear naked choke finish, just sensational. How big of a win is this for Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu as well in a time when wrestling really is the base of most of the champions in the UFC? Well, I, I think it's a huge win. I think it's a huge win for Damian Maia. I mean, whether anybody else could replicate that against Ben Askren is really the question. There are some other grapplers in this division that would like a go, but, I mean, Damian Maia is at the top of the pile right now, especially with that victory. And when you consider not just that victory, but all of the victories that Damian Maia has had success with, the two campaigns at welterweight and middleweight, I mean, it's quite incredible. Is he worthy of a have a Hall of Fame spot, do you think, at this stage? Oh, I think so, and especially the fact that he's not even done. He's got some more things that he wants to conquer. He's got other challenges out there in this sport that he wants to go and take on. I think at this point he's done challenging for the title, and he just wants to have fun. If you, did you see the man celebrating with his t team and family <laughs> and the fans? Yeah. He loved every moment of being yeah. here in this main event. Now he's having fun. Now it's not about chasing gold. He's at the end of his career. He's having fun 100%. Damian Myers. He's clearly end up working hard fame. though. The physical yeah. shape that he turned he out in tonight was some of the probably the best form that we've seen him for a long time. Really incredible, and still enjoying the challenge of adding new things to his game as well. Dealing with you know a different skill set in, in Ben Askren, who he spoke about as a very different wrestler to everyone that he'd faced before. I mean, what more is there to say about Damian Meyer? He's had this most incredible career. He knows he's coming to the end of his career now. He's accepting of that, and he wants to have a couple more runs out to you know celebrate jiu-jitsu and prove to everybody what he's capable of. Well, I've got to, I've got to put it on you, Paul. Top 10 now. There's a lot of guys above him. He's fought some of them before as well, but where would you like to see him go? Give us a name. For Damian Maya. Does he fight I mean, up or does he become a, maybe a gatekeeper? It depends on the, the type of 10. challenge. Does he want to go take on a veteran like he mentioned in Diego Sanchez or Gilbert Burns, who's the other young stud out there in a jiu-jitsu yeah, black belt be maniac who's calling him out? Let's be honest, that's kind of the fight we want to yeah. see, right? The explosiveness on the stand-up side is going to go to Gilbert Burns in that one. I don't care who you are. That, I mean, that guy's explosive. He's yeah. younger, he's faster, he's stronger. But when it hits the mat, which Gilbert is not afraid to go and challenge himself when it comes to that. With, well, we saw with Gunnar Nelson. Yeah, we, exactly. So there's a lot of challenges and good matchups there. But I like that one the best. Yeah, I, I would agree. I mean, I think... I mean, the De Diego Sanchez one's a fascinating one, especially given the fact that Diego in his last couple of fights has looked a little rejuvenated himself, you know, use, utilizing his grappling much more like he used to in the early days of his career. Two veterans throwing down, of course, it's good to see. But as you said, Damian Maia is still competitive in the top 10. There are other fighters and a Gilbert Burns Bra Brazil showdown. I mean, that's mouthwatering stuff. What I like about a lot of the fight nights that we do, a new star or stars emerge. I think that we have mined another one here. Frenchman Cyril Gann looked quite fantastic. I mean, the script wasn't exactly how I saw it, but there was some beautiful violence there, and Dan it ended with another submission for the big man. But where is the ceiling for this guy? Well, this is the thing. We really don't know. I I've never seen a, such a one-sided striking match in, in, in a fight that I thought was going to be far more competitive. I mean, I know he came in as the big favorite, but the athleticism and power with these two huge heavyweights, anything could have happened. But Gan managed the distance so well. He picked shots very well. He broke his opponent down, stayed out of danger. And then, you know, to finish with a takedown and a submission, it just caps a perfect performance. And when you've got a striker that can also finish with submissions, two of which he's got in the UFC now, I mean, where is the ceiling? That's, that's really the question. Especially based on his composure, how relaxed he is in there. His coaches even talked about it. He wants to Shazam a song that his opponent is walking out <laughs> that's to right. in the middle of it, right? Remember that? Yeah. So that's yeah. how calm, cool, and collected this young guy is in there. 
Yeah, I think that, you know, w this is a potential. If he keeps moving that way, we're going to see him in the top 10 in no time. And great timing as well with the legalization of mixed martial arts in France, just as he's coming through. Couldn't have timed it better. Great stuff for those guys. And we had a, a pair of lightweight bouts as well. Dan, what was your pick and who stood out for you? Well, the way that Stevie Ray managed to, s to clinch that victory right at the end of the fight, you know, the first round was very, very close. It was difficult to score that one. Second round, I would say, All Johnson, yeah, yeah, I would say that Johnson edged that. I mean, he picked up the pace. He started to land cleaner shots. We saw damage on Stevie Ray's face. Clearly, he was the worst for wear. But then in the third round, he came out, still game, still standing on his front foot, trying to push the pace. And then that final, that final flurry where he was able to get the back control and just land so many shots. I mean, that was really the flurry that finished it. And that was where he went from a striking deficit to a striking advantage. And, you know, disappointing for Michael Johnson, but without a doubt, the biggest win on Stevie Ray's record. And Absolutely. it was another case for jiu-jitsu prevailing with Benil Dariush oh. as well tonight. Oh, my goodness. But what impressed me so much about Benil tonight is coming into this fight, a lot of the talk was, OK, you got to get this fight to the ground. You don't want to stand and bang with Frank the Crank. He's going to, you know, he's a, he's a savage on his feet. Benil said, yeah, yeah, I don't care about any of that. I'm going to come out and show you where I train at King's MMA, and I'm a striker as well. Yeah. Came out, had beautiful stand-up, very aggressive, attacked him, was after him from the beginning. As soon as the fight hit the ground, a beautiful submission. So he just showed levels of everything. He showed the top 10 Benil Dariush that he was for so long, and somebody that was working his way towards the title shot. That's the Benil we saw again tonight. Per a flawless performance. Literally a flawless performance. Yeah. Not one mark on him. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports and analysis, download the ESPN app. And for live streaming and special content, subscribe to ESPN+.